unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like me. Sing it again, a bit faster. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord.
hands for Jesus.
mufe oh atamburira mufe tumwe basa atamburira mufe Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you because the entrance of your word brings light. And you give understanding to the simple, all to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we say, Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5, let's begin from verse 12. Give me the Amplified. Now, the reason why we are taking time to teach on the grace of God, and consequent weeks some of you will hear us again chipping in and out, is because this message is being misunderstood. Hallelujah. And um, we are misrepresented by certain people who have failed to get the understanding of these things because they simply don't listen to us. Hallelujah. We forgive them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray that they might come to the saving knowledge. Hallelujah. Somebody once said, no, the grace gospel is just any other thing like grace, mercy. I said, no. You should understand that it is the word of His grace. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God is his person. And so, the reason why, for example, right now, as I'm going to share this few minutes that I have here, many of you are going to get annoyed, you know. Why? Because you're going to discover that you are lied to. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But after service, be sober enough to say, Mokama and Sonywa. You unlearn and then you learn the truth. Hallelujah. The reason why we see the church as is today is because... Titus tells us that he's, Paul is an apostle by the grace of God to God's elect. 
and it is according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. In other words, when truth comes, God manifests. In a place where truth isn't, God can't manifest. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So the more the truth of God is preached in the lives of men, the more Christ is revealed. The essence of Fanero is not to bring something new. No, it is to bring things which were not seen but existed. For example, if I tell you, you just sit down and get a car, and Pastor Nixon tells you he gets a car, okay? Just by sitting down. Some of you who stayed up, what were you looking at? Were you driving four wheels? Four wheel drives? Hallelujah. Is it by mistake that the next day I was also given a car by somebody who didn't even attend the service? No. But we seek that we, we create the easiness of things. The other week, last week, I was, uh, they brought me a lady who was deaf in both ears. I don't know where the family is. She was healed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. She was what? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The woman came deaf in both ears. Now she's what? Hearing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to start manifesting God in a way such that you don't first say, Sharabaka. Zakalalalalala. To do a miracle. No. Praise the Lord Jesus. You're in your bus. And you're going to cover and you're bored, you just look for your deaf ear, a blind eye, and seven eye. Because if even the guys in the buses sell local drugs, you also stand up in the bus and say, Shikalamanda Rabakasti. If you're blind, deaf in the ear, cancerous tumor, it's HIV positive. Kazanda Raba Zeketeli Paranda, I have some medicine for you. It is free of charge. Karande Rebo Zile Kesita. And that's how things go. The last healing chronicles are impressed by the things that happened. In fact, one of these days I'm going to bring you a lady. We prayed for her and a new bladder grew. Brand new from heaven. You understand? Brand new for you struggling with eyes. You just do like this and say, God, replace! Yeah. Hallelujah. Because with God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Now, let me begin from a certain understanding. The Bible says that Remove not the ancient landmarks which were set by your forefathers. It means that there are certain things that were set up for in our lives that are supposed to be landmarks to teach us where we come from and where we go. The only problem with the Christian faith of our dispensation is they do not invest time to understand history and read through history. Hallelujah. For example, if any of you have taken time to read the history of the church, you realize that the biggest contention that ever arose in the history of the body of Christ was against or about the doctrine of righteousness, as of whether it's gift imputed by faith in Christ Jesus or it is gift by works. Of course we had men who knew that the only way church would exist was a place where it would marry certain the government institutions and all these kinds of things that there is a place of precedence in what ought to be wrong before it becomes the Catholic. You get my point? And I'm not here for religion, please don't get me wrong. But there is a place where the Protestant comes in and says we are protesting against a certain belief system. But when we are dealing with this kind of belief system, remember the issue that causes us to process, for some we can go back home and read the 95 thesis of the man of God who... Martin Luther, that he put on the Wittenberg church, you realize that his biggest contention and the reason of the break-off was the place of justification by faith. And that is why we now have the invasion of what people call the five solas. Sola gratia, sola what? Manange. Sola scripture, sola what? Yes. Okay, you'll have some time and research about it. And these five solas you realize, in the simplest English you realize, the place that was protesting against the system was saying, 
we believe in the scripture as the sole source of inspiration. And therefore we do not want to have anything that is practiced amidst us but without any bearing in the scriptures. Two, we believe that a man is saved by faith. So if a man only believes on the Christ Jesus without any works required, that man is born again by simply believing. And three, they said, we believe that justification is by faith in Christ Jesus. And therefore, a man can only be justified by faith. And thereby, like Romans 5, 1 tells you, we have peace. All of these are quoted. He says, they believe that the grace of God is the only entity by which a man can live and not of works, least any man should boast. All of these things are in our history. They are not new. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But what they were trying to do here is that they wanted to define a Christ that is not religious. Fanero is not a place where you, we want to create religious affiliations. We have had those things for so many years and they didn't answer us. The scripture says, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. The place that completes me in Christ is bigger than being Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Roman, Catholic, or Anglican. The issue is not where you come from. The issue is the personal relationship that you share with Almighty God. Because I've seen men which are born again in the Roman Catholic. I've seen men which are born again in the Protestant faith. I've seen men which are born again in the Pentecostal movement. And I've seen men who are not born again in the Pentecostal. I've seen men who are not born again in the Protestant. And I've seen men who are not born again in the Roman Catholic. Say amen. So at the end of the day, salvation is a personal experience. It's a personal. That's why heaven is going to shock many people. Bananga heaven will shock people. I was thinking about it the other day. Heaven is going to shock people. And if you get to heaven and you don't see me there, you remember you're not in heaven. I have told you. Look around for Apostle Grace. You should fear. Put your name. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we seek to put an understanding of things that are very much so misunderstood by people in church today and thereby has created a place of Christians who live a life of deception. They are not really free, but they are free. The guy is bound inside, but he's free outside. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why he speaks of an experience where he... He has a problem with men who teach you of what you should not touch, what you should not test, what you should not drink. And the Bible says, and these things have an end in their doing. The Bible says, these things are to perish with their using. Let's go back from verse 21. Uh Wherefore, let's read, one, two, three, go. If you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances such as touch not, uh test not, and hand or not, uh-huh, which are to perish with the using after the commandments and the doctrines of men, but not after Christ. Which things have indeed a what? A show of wisdom in will, worship, and humility. Neglecting of the body, but not in any honor of the satisfying of the flesh. The guy has never entered a room to sleep with a girl, but his brain is sleeping with her every day. But he's saying is what? He's free. The body is neglected, but the soul is active. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go back to 21 and read in the message. It's very interesting. Uh-huh. So then, let's read. One, two, three, let's go. And then, if with Christ you've put all that what? Pretentious. you're pretentious. If with Christ you put up all the pretentious and infertile religion behind you, why do you let yourselves be one? Pull it by it. Uh huh. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. Don't go near this. Uh huh. Do you think that things that are here today and are gone tomorrow are worth that kind of attention? They are not. They are atten- what their attention. What is what their attention? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says he, he knew no sin. For us, we don't know how. And it says. Let's continue uh, uh, in the message. Uh-huh. Such things sound what? Impressive. If there's Satan a deep enough voice, 
And they even give the illusion of being pious and humble and ascetic. But they are just another way of trying on. Making yourselves look. Me, I have never slept with a woman in my life. <laughs> but the Bible says if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has what? Why do you tell us you are okay, yet you are not okay? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is pretentious what? We pray that the Lord will bring Connie to justice. The shedding of innocent blood. The lives he has shed by murdering them every day. And the Christ comes and tells you that he that hateth his brother, murdereth him. Every day you kill people. I hate that guy. In the spirit realm, you have shot. Because you are living a life of pretension. Tell your neighbor, we do not pretend in the gospel. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Romans 5.12. Where our main scripture is. You are going to love this evening. I promise you. If you say me, I don't. Today you are going to love it. And understand it. Romans 5.12, give me the Amplified. Um, we're going to read slowly. Praise the Lord. But with gusto. Uh-huh. One, two, three, let's go. Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man, and death as a result of sin, so death spread to all men, no one being able to stop it or to escape its power, because all men sin. Listen to that. Listen to that. Just listen. Before you even... Just think about it. He has said, sin came into the world. Through what? So one man, Adam, did what? Sin. And the Bible says, sin came into the world through one man, and death as a result of sin. So why do people die? Uh huh. And he said, and so death spread to all men. Why does death spread to all men? Because all men sin. So no one being able to stop it or to escape its power because all men sin. Now the ultimate thought in my head and your head is that when a year, one year old child dies, they die because they are. Is it fair? Why don't people complain? Why don't Christians complain? I want to show you how, what religion has done. If one child is three months old, they've never done anything, Pastor Zah, and tomorrow they are dead because of the sin of Adam. Is it fair that that one three-year-old, one two-month-year-old child has died because of the sin of one man? Is it fair that we are counting one sin on a little child because of one man's irresponsibility? Answer me, Munzile Mung. Is it fair? So, if it is not fair, if it is not fair, you are believing so that it is not fair. If it is not fair, why do people have a problem when one man can make all men right? Omana wa yafa, yagamba, taka mutaka, I don't understand how people understand the gospel. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. Next verse. Uh huh. Let's read one, two, three. To be sure, sin was in before ever the law was given. But sin is not to man's account where there is no law to transgression. No church is evil. It's also a hard thing to think about it. So sin is here and it exists. Okay? But sin cannot be counted. On a man where there is no law. I don't know if you understand. 
Now there is a person who is saying, Echitegeza we cash let us you know why you're thinking that way? It's because you're not truly born again. That tonaloko kaburunji. Boloko katoja kubiro oza. So you you realize that sin was in the world before ever the law was. But it did not have consequence. It did not have the power to be counted on a man's account. You get it? That's why one time when I was preaching some time ago, I gave people an example of the relationship God had with Adam, Abraham, and Sarah. He tells Sarah, you're going to have a child. Sarah laughs. Ah, ha, ha, ha. When Sarah laughs, it is supposed to be doubting God. But because Sarah has never been taught and told that don't doubt, okay? Abraham asks, God asks Abraham, eh? let's read. Then Sarah denied, uh, uh, let's go back from 14, verse 14. Verse 14, Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I'll return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a child. This is God speaking. Uh-huh. And then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Next verse. And the men rose up and went. I thought God was going to say, Because you have laughed. <laughs> Why did you laugh? I laughed. Yeah, I didn't laugh. She even lied. <laughs> and God just ignored it and walked away. Now, that thing kills the devil. Eh? You must understand. It's because the devil thinks, his mind is simple, punish. Punish. Abraham lies to the house of Abimelech that Sarah is his wife. Sister, sorry. The guys come to beat batteries on Sarah. <laughs> Not your son. On Sarah. And the Bible says the Lord had first closed up all the wounds of the house of because of Sarah, because of Sarah Abraham's wife. The Lord judged Abimelech for touching who? Even though she was a what? His sister. You get it? He repeats it in the house of Pharaoh. God plagues the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh tells Abraham, why did you lie to us? Abraham is the one lying. But God is still judging. Whether Abraham is lying or not, you're hitting on his wife. That's my problem. You get Now, God can do that twice. And somebody says, hey, does that mean that God is promoting sin? God is not promoting sin. He's only trying to establish that one principle. That the sin existed in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. It's not charged on men's account where there is no law to transgress. If you don't tell me don't steal, I don't know what stealing is. Therefore I might steal, but it will not have power on my life because I don't know what. That is to the man who is not born again. You get my point? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying, okay? But the Bible says, sin was in the world before ever the law. But sin is not charged to men's account where there is no law. Sin is not counted where there is no law. Sin is not counted where there is no law. Sin is not counted where there is no law. It's not me. It is Romans 5.13. Blame it, okay? Next verse. The next verse says, Yet death held sway from Adam to Moses, the lawgiver, even over those who did not themselves transgress as a positive command as Adam did. Adam was a type prefigure of the one who was to come in reverse, the former destructive, the latter doing what? Saving. Are you hearing me? Now, then the ultimate question would be that if sin is not imputed where there is no law, why is Adam punished? He said, he's punished because thou shalt not eat his law. Do you understand? Now, when they eat of the forbidden fruit, the scriptures tell us that that swayed from Adam to Moses, the lawgiver, even over those who did not themselves transgress a positive command as Adam did. The kingdom says the people which did not sin in the similitude of Adam, in the way of Adam, 
in the similar to the Badam's transgressions. Who is the figure of him that was to come? That means my little one year old child did not do anything like Adam did. He didn't disobey anyone, but death reigned on the child. Because they were all sinners. They were sinners. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Next verse. But, Washeke, Maranda, Rabbi Stick. He says, But God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass. His grace is out of all proportion to the fall of man. If many died through one man's falling away, his lapse, his offense, much more profusely did God's grace and free gift that comes through the undeserved favor of the one man Jesus Christ abound and overflow to and for the benefit of many. If Adam can I say I have sinned and everybody dies because of Adam's sin. Jesus comes as the new Adam. And that man knew no sin. And when he knows no sin, the scriptures say that, that his undeserved favor abounds to the benefit. Not against you, but to the benefit. Jesus Christ came that, that it, it would overflow. His grace would overflow to our benefit. Why? Because the law was not for our benefit. Moses himself, after he had sprinkled the blood on all the instruments of the law and the book, he said, for take this and put it in the presence of God, for this shall be a covenant of the Lord and it may be a witness against you. He said, the moment you get the Ten Commandments, put it before that it shall be a witness against. Why don't you understand that the law is against you? It's a witness against. It's not bad. It's only telling you you can't. The law is not. Jesus says that the law is good. But the law in its own self does not have the inherent power to save you. What saves you is Christ who didn't steal. Say amen somebody. But when he took the book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord, the Bible says... That it may be there for a witness against you. A witness against you. The Christ comes and the Bible says that he abounds to us the undeserved favor in the benefit, to the benefit of us. Don't you realize the difference? Don't you see the difference? That is why when he's speaking about the commandments and the law, he says that he got all the things which were against you, blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances, the Bible says, which were against us and contrary to us. The, the ordinances were not only against you, but they were contrary to you. So he says, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the law was nailed. The ordinances were nailed. I don't know why you don't get them off. Why you get them off the cross and carry them. The ordinances were what? Those are the one thing that stayed. When men think they were crucifying the Christ, they were actually crucifying of the ordinances and the handwriting. Oh, the law. Give me the amplified of that. Some people should understand very intently. Uh -huh. Let's read. One, two, three, let's go. Having cancelled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note, uh -huh, bond with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us, hostile to us. This note with its regulation decrees and demands, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross. Why? Because it was hostile to you. The same stones on which the Ten Commandments are written are the same stones that have to stone the woman which has committed adultery. 
Now, he comes in the figure and form that when they bring a woman which has committed adultery, he will go down and write and stand up and say, let him without sin cast the first stone. He's only trying to tell them, I came that I might crucify this thing. That in the end, you will remove the law and get me in your life. Because I am the fulfillment of the law. Say amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. But do you know how many people offer allegiance to Moses than to Christ? Do you know some people don't even believe Christ is come in the flesh? They disqualify all the New Testament dispensation and say that we believe only in the Torah. Do you realize that they don't have life? They cannot do miracles. They can't experience God. Why? Because they are convinced that the Christ has never come in the flesh. That is the spirit of Antichrist. Whether you want it or not, Jesus Christ walked the surface of this earth one day in the body. You can never disqualify that. No book can ever. Islam has tried, but they have failed. Islam, same spirit. Judaism, same spirit. That's why the ultimate prophets are in the law. So there is no understanding of a place called grace. That's why Sharia is in the world. Same spirit. You do this, you pay for it. You do this, you pay for it. You do this, you pay for it. And when a man is in that dispensation, he can't understand the work of Christ and what Jesus came to do. Do you know how many people are desperate to see you fail? Do you know how many people are desperate to say, Ah, Apostle Grace and I are with me. Do you know how? That's why some of us will stand. That is the only Christian. Do you know how many people are dying that you fail? So that they say, ah, tetuaba gamba, tetuaba gamba. But you will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. Because you don't stand on your power. If a man thinks he stands, he will fall. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. Because he's standing on his own strength. But if a man is entirely standing on the strength which is of God, that man cannot fail. That man cannot fail. He said, and none shall be able to pluck you out of my hands. He said, none shall be able to pluck. Do you know what it means? He says, none shall be able to pluck you out of my hand. The zeal of the Lord shall perform this. God is too desperate to see you out of his hand. As in, to see you in his hand. And any man can be as desperate to pluck you out. This is a, a zeal issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of the increase of his government, uh huh, and peace shall be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with what? Judgment and with justice for thenceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will what? There are things God is too zealous. He's too zealous to put in your life. There is right now a, a person who is too desperate to see you fail. Too desperate. That is hostility against you. There's someone right now who wants to see you pregnant, see you drunk. See, they, they are desperate. They can even go on their knees and say, Mukama and Saba. That's why I told people that's the only reason why we will stand. And you must accept that people will exist like that. If you have any open door in your life. Unless your doors are closed. But if your doors are open, he says, Behold, an open and effectual door has been set for you. But behold, there are many what? Adversaries. That doesn't shake us. The door is big. Tell your neighbor, the door is big. Let the adversaries bring it on. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.